so let's see how to create this scene that I used in my latest Pac-Man Squid Game video. I want to start making the container object. I will use a simple UV sphere that I want to scale larger, 10 times maybe. Let's apply the scale and also let's move this up on the Z axis so that the container object will be above the ground plane. We can name this properly, something like container. And in the object panel properties, we can change the viewport display option from texture to wireframe and also I can turn off the render visibility because most of the time I don't want this kind of simulation object to be visible in render later. So now the next step is to turn on the uh, rigid body option for this object. So let's click on that and we want to change the type from active to passive and the collision shape from convex hull to mesh. Also, if we want, we can reduce this margin value in order to have a little bit more accurate uh, distance between the simulated objects when, when colliding. So now the next step is to create another collection. We can call this uh, active elements. I will use a simple icosphere just to have less faces to deal with. Uh, let's scale this little bit down, apply the scale once again, and then with G, I want to move this object somewhere inside my uh, tank object here. And now we want to make this icosphere also rigid body, this time active, and all the default values will be fine. If we play the animation, we can see that this object slowly falls down until it reach and collide with this container. And it's a little bit too slow. We can increase this overall speed, changing the default value from one to three maybe. Now you can see that's quite faster. And yeah, what we want to do now is to Shift D and duplicate a few times this icosphere. And now playing the simulation, you can see all this icosphere falling down and reaching some sort of resting position. And when we have this, we want to use this position as a starting point for the next simulation but if I go back to the first frame of course they switch back to the um, original starting position so what we have to do is to right click select all the object in the active elements collection and then here in object rigid body we want to apply the transformation for each one of these icosphere at the current frame so when I choose this selection, Blender will set this uh, position and rotation values as starting situation for all of them. In fact, if I go back to the first frame, you can see that they are not moving back to their first position, but they will inherit this new one. So what I can do now is Shift D and duplicate this group a few times and repeat the same operation. So I will wait a few seconds until they reach a new rest position. Right click, select them once again, object, rigid body, apply transformation, shift and left arrow to go back to the first frame on my timeline. And once again, shift D and I can duplicate once more in order to have more of them. Select them all, 
object rigid body apply transformation go back to first frame shift d duplicate be sure always to be inside your container object otherwise these will explode away if they are colliding with this container mesh of course more we go further in this process more the pieces are and uh, slower the simulation will be i stop the simulation i select them all object rigid body apply transformation now for the last step i want to duplicate once more all these objects in order to fill this container but if i now duplicate this and i position in this way you can see that they will be outside my container so a nice trick to solve this is to select my container object shift s and move the cursor to the center of this object and then i select just one icosphere to be sure to be inside this active element uh, collection and then select all the objects shift d and then right click to uh, reset them on their position i want to change this uh, pivot point transform option to 3d cursor and in global option i can press r to rotate and enter 180 degrees and in this way i'm sure that they are inside my colliding object i can also pressing g and z move them a little bit down and then play once again my simulation and this time we will have to wait a little bit of course the process now is very slow at least on my workstation here it depends on your machine but more are the icosphere involved less is the performance of your computer of course so let's say that we are happy and for the last time we want to select all the object and apply the transformation so now we have all the elements inside in a nice and cool rest position and what we want to do now is to make some sort of opening down here some kind of hatch some door and we can do this let's uh, uncheck let's um, uncheck this rigid body world option so we don't have to be afraid that the simulation will start while we are working and we can just select our container object enter edit mode in phase selection mode we can box select this we can we can also hide this i can this is maybe too much let's just box select all this face down here x and delete them so now we have this container object that has this hole here and if we now play the simulation the uh, icosphere will fall down directly but we don't want this we want to have control over this opening so uh, a very quick way to make this is to duplicate this object we can rotate this 180 degrees and in edit mode i want to box select this section here this last part and then with Ctrl and I, I will invert the selection and get rid of all the other faces. So now I have this piece that I can, I am, I still am in the um, 3D cursor option here, pivot point option. So I can scale this a little bit. And if I rotate this, it will act a little bit like an edge or door i can apply the scale and 
I want to duplicate this and scale x minus 1 in order to get the other side. So let's shift select uh, both of these two objects, Control A and Rotation and Scale. We want to be sure that Rotation and Scale are reset to 0, 0, 0 and 1, 1, 1 value. And now we can also switch back to this medium point. Okay, let's open a little bit our draft editor here and we want, don't know, at frame 20 this to be opened. So let's insert for the Y axis a single keyframe for both of them. And in one, two, three, four, five, six, eight frames, let's open this, this. So we have this simple, very simple animation. So now we want to reset the Freddy cursor position, pressing Shift and C. And now we need to add a plane floor object where all the icosphere will bounce and collide with. So Shift A, Mesh Plane. We want to scale this way larger. Something like this will be enough. Control A, apply the scale. And here in the Physics tab, Rigid Body, Passive, and all the default parameter will be fine. We are almost ready, but we have to change one option for this animated door down here. We want them to be passive, but we have to check this animated option because they will move during the simulation and Blender has to know that. Okay, now we can unhide our active elements collection. We can go back to solid view. And one thing that I like to do is to turn on this random color option that makes a little bit more visible all the elements. And we can also add yeah, another UV sphere. In my case was the Pac-Man, but just to make a little bit more interesting the simulation. And we want to have this rigid body and passive. Everything is set and ready. Let's go back to the rigid body world. Let's turn on the simulation world. And now I want to adjust back this overall speed value. Maybe three is too much. I don't like one because the default number, uh, most of the times it results in a very slow simulation that seems sometimes not real to me. So, so I will go for 1.5. Let's play our simulation and we can see if everything is good. Oh, I made a mi little mistake. We don't need the first frames, the first 20 frames. We have the door that will start the opening animation at frame 20. So essentially we don't need the first 20 frames of calculation. It's only a, a waste of time. So we can open this cache uh, menu here and simulation start frame we can change it to 20. So let's try it again and after a few minutes of simulation we have this nice result but you can see that after uh, 10 seconds of animation all the atmosphere was not entirely uh, exit from this container so I will try to increase even more the uh, overall speed and let's see what happened now and here we are you can see that we have a different kind of a result I like this more it's faster and more believable I think but it's kind of personal taste and basically this is how I made my simulation uh, scene in the squid game pac-man video that I just uploaded so I hope guys this uh, was somehow useful for you and if so please leave a like or 
a comment or a question or request if you may have. I will try my best to answer to all of you as soon as I can. I invite you to visit my Patreon page where you can download this entire scene. If you decide to join my Patreon program supporting me, my channel and all my work. And lastly, I also invite you to visit my main YouTube channel, Soto Zen, where you can watch all my 3D animation and VFX stuff that I constantly upload there. So guys, thanks so much for watching this. Have a great day and see you soon with another great video. Ciao!